Today. Uh, yeah, nope. Nope. Try it again. Yep. Yeah, take two. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Big Dumb Monsters. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. And we are in the studio for the first time in like a month. It feels uh, good. It feels yes. real good. Uh, as Tony, Tony, Tony said in the early 90s, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, today we are talking the 19... <laughs> nope. <laughs> we are talking the 1976 version of King Kong, starring Jeff Bridges, Charles Grodin, and Jessica Lange. Um, meh. That's it? That's yeah. all there is to it? It's a movie. It was an okay movie. It's a decent movie. It's alright. Yeah. Good looking monkey. Not a, not a bad... It wasn't horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah. It certainly wasn't good. <laughs> Jeff Bridges is so fucking dreamy in this movie, though. Yeah, say it a million times. Goddamn hippie beard. American treasure. American treasure. Um, but yeah, um, this is a uh, crazy, crazy attempt at remaking a, a classic horror movie. Um has its moments, but has moments that are equally as horrible uh, as the... It's know, as bad as it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have a giant monkey that does not work in this movie. Um, a robot, sorry. I forgot the important robot part of that. Yeah. Uh, no, the monkey works. He has a job. Uh, <laughs> supporting his family. Supporting his family and everything, man. He's he's made strides, that monkey. He's yeah. made strides. Um <laughs> Uh, I never pass up a chance to quote my favorite comedian, Dana Gould. I don't even think this is his joke. This might be a Bobcat Goldweight joke, uh, but I heard it from uh, Dana Gould. Um, if King Kong didn't escape, what was the show? <laughs> anyway. What? <laughs> We're going to get into the show now. Yeah. Here we go. Big Dumb Monsters. Enjoy. Yeah, no, we have refrigerators. There's a collection of noises going yeah. on right now. One of these days, I, I will get the initiative and fucking switch out those refrigerators. <laughs> My only, like, hesitation is the other one is a little bit smaller than that one. Yeah. Eh, I'm just being fucking... It'll, it'll hold beer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. We could always just go for a cooler with some ice in it. <laughs> we could always drink less. No. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. No, we can't. No, we can't. Oh, I forgot to start this movie. Ooh. This movie... I don't know. I have mixed feelings. Same. There were, like, things they did well, um, but when they when they cheap... Hold on, we have sound. We do have sound. Yeah, there we go. We don't want sound. Yeah, um... There are things they did well, but when they when there's things they didn't do well, they really man, didn't do them well. Did they not do them well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a very also weird opening of this movie. Yeah, it has. This is like a. This is like a, like an ominous like horror movie opening. But I, I don't know. I wouldn't classify this as a horror movie. No. I mean, it's a monster movie. Yes. Um, but I don't know more. Adventure, I guess. Like, there's not really even any adventure. Yeah, I mean, they go to the island. Like, that's that's the adventure part. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. It's it's like, it's a weird outlier because it's there's not enough like it's, yeah, quote unquote action adventure to to call really it an action call movie. it that. Yeah, yeah. There's suspense. There's yeah thriller. I, I guess. I don't know. It's just a giant monkey movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a monkey movie. Um, I mean, I loved watching this when I was a kid. 
This is the first time I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. No shit. This was like an HBO staple. I didn't have HBO. Oh, uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. I That's fucking, right. Yeah. Um, so this was on a lot. Uh, I, was a, I was a peasant child. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was rated PG, so like I, I could watch this like freely without like yeah. parental interference. Yep. <laughs> Even though there were some like you know, almost some titties in it. Almost, yeah. but nothing really. <laughs> a lot of a lot of monkey gore. Yeah. Yeah, that was, dude, that was bloodier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, when he's at the uh, top of the uh, World Trade Center, it's like the goddamn end of the 99 <laughs> Problems video. Like, just... <laughs> bah, 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 Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, like, I don't... Well, yeah, I mean, I always remember being, like, kind of bloody, but, like, yeah, it was really, like... It was excessive. Blowing huge holes in this fucking monkey for a, suit. For a PG movie? Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a little much. <laughs> it has frozen a little bit. Yes, it has. Let's see if we can't... Uh, unfreeze this. Uh, I completely forgot about uh, uh, Jeff Bridges, like eco warrior here. Uh, it did just like super, like automatically catch up. Like, <coughs> yes, it did. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a. I I suppose it's a monster movie with like a, a message. Yeah, they are they are pretty heavy handed about like the oil company being evil. Like, yeah, you know, you, I think Jeff Bridges calls Charles Grodin like an eco rapist at one point, like, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the cast in this movie though? It is pretty damn good. I will it's, say it's pretty stacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I will say I've never been like a Charles Grodin fan. I don't get the appeal of Charles Grodin. He is that likable asshole. Or not even he's likable. He's the not, asshole for sure. Yeah. Not not likable. He's he's the the asshole that you love to hate. Is, yeah. is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He is good at that. A smarmy cock, I think. Is. And he, I mean, he is perfect at it in this movie. He's just such a fucking like, like dick. just a sleazy dick. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to think of an oil exec, that's it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Charles Grodin in King Kong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, decent special effects, bad blue screen. Yeah, like like I, really bad. As far as like dude in monster suits movies go, like I think this is one of the better ones. I really like the effects. The suit was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like, with like the guy in the suit and like. Do you know who the guy in the suit was? Isn't it Rick Baker? It's fucking Rick Baker. Yeah, yeah. Um, whether or not this is true, I remember my dad telling me this when I was younger that um. The scene at the end where they have him in the big, like, giant fucking gas pump, like, yeah. ch you know, chained up in the cage. Um, my uncle's apartment at the time, like, could overlook where they were filming that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. My dad said they were watching, like, watching them film that scene. That's pretty sweet. With the giant uh, monkey robot that never worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please tell me that's in the trivia. Um, A little bit of that. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's 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 monkey robot facts in trivia. <laughs> Delightful. Um, Excellent. Um, the, I, I I don't remember. Well, I was say, I'm not going to I'm not going to say I don't remember. Um, this is a very different setup than like the other King Kong like versions that we the made. from what the hell was that 32 30 I think 33. Um, and then like know, the original the, with with Fay Ray. Yeah, is the other one two thousand three or two thousand five? The one with Jack Black. Yeah, the the Peter Jackson one. I think it's two thousand five. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because I was out of high school when that came out. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thereabouts. For, for well, yeah. There's no movie no, theater there. The there late. There's no. There's no this there now either. I saw that at the movie theater at Latham Circle Mall. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that theater was good for one reason, and that was you could go. And nobody was there. Nobody was there. That's yeah. why East Greenbush is good. I saw, <laughs> um, at the time, uh, Tom, who past guest of the show, <coughs> was the projectionist at the Cinema 10 over at the Northway Mall, which oh, is Jesus. also long gone. Yeah. Um, and he got us in to see The Phantom Menace before it opened. Oh, really? Uh, at Latham Circle. Yeah. Fanboyed you? Yeah. So we were disappointed before everybody else got disappointed. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. It's going to be awesome. What the fuck did we just watch? <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm back in the studio. That's right. We are. Uh, it's like the first time in like a month. Mm-hmm. 
just between COVID and scheduling difficulties, yeah. I'm going to put that not in a uh, next to a thing that's drinkable. Uh, oh, you don't want to drink that? <laughs> Go ahead, drink out of it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, f- I'm not gonna lie, like all fucking day, I've just been like, oh, I want to record. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've been antsy. Uh, uh boy. Oh, by the way, we're watching King Kong from 1976. Oh yes, the movie we have been talking about. Yeah. Um, um, King Kong, but 1976. I don't know why we always have to talk about it here because we do introduce it. Yeah, do an intro. We yeah. do an intro. Uh, it's a little redundant. A little it's just, redundant. It's just part of our shtick now. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that I mentioned shtick. No, and no, no, then no, you... Outside podcast moment, we can't forget to record that thing later on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. maybe we should start doing those things before we record. Yeah, the that was my plan. I was going to bring that up, uh, and then we just got excited about recording and that's, got right that's into fine. it. That's yeah, fine. It's fine. Fine. No, that's all good. Everything is fine. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I. The um, I was going to say this is it opens much different than the other versions where like they're out to set a you know film a movie. Yeah, and like it's almost like. Uh, Jessica Lang is on that trip and then like that's like something happens and like that instead of getting the story of the people in the movie yeah. we get the people who find her like you know and it's you know we get these this eco army not well not army like not eco petro army that's what I meant to say yeah um because again oil company's bad very very bad in this movie petroli holes yeah yeah um, so yeah, it just felt like, oh, you know, that's the movie, like how it normally starts, but yeah, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do this instead. Man, look at Charles Grodin doing his worst Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking outfit though, man. I would fuck, I would rock the shit of that safari outfit. Yeah. The, the khaki shirt with the pockets, the, <laughs> the khaki the, pants, the, ascot. Yeah. The ascot. <laughs> He's just missing like a pith helmet or something. Oh my God. Of course, I would just be drinking in that outfit, like you know. yeah. But and he does, <laughs> yeah. He definitely does. I uh, again, as much as I, I dislike Charles Grodin, he you know it's used to great effect, like because he's such a douche. Yeah. The uh, where they're all like when they first get to the island, and he's like you know he fucking makes a point of telling Jeff Bridges to be like, hey, I'm about to disembark the boat. Like, yeah. make sure you you know get shots of me doing that. Yeah. And he just, yeah, like strides off the boat, like all proud. And like, there's already 20 guys running around the island. Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, man. Like, was he a bigger bastard in this or Beethoven? I've never seen any of the Beethoven movies. What? Yeah, yeah. Heresy. My dislike of Charles Grodin and like. The Family first, pet movies. Even as a kid, I like, well, as a. When that came out, it was probably like, what, 90? Like, 91 around there? I don't know. Uh, ooh, pardon me. So I was like a 12. I think it was, was mid-90s. Yeah, like 11, 12. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, a little bit, like, aged out, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the Beethoven movies. Who just, doesn't love a St. Bernard, though? I don't like Charles Grodin. I didn't like Charles I just Grodin. don't like Charles Grodin. Yeah, like Charles Grodin. Charles <laughs> <laughs> Grodin. Uh, Yeah. Look at the dude in all his hippie glory. Yeah. I do, I do like Jeff Bridges in this movie. Yeah. My uh, my sister-in-law came over to the house and I was watching this. And she goes, is that Jeff Bridges? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. She goes, he was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I was going to say, like, I was, I was uh, like, well, I, I, when I was watching, I'm fucking all over the place. Right? Yeah. Jesus. Hey, da baby da hey, da baby da uh, when I was watching this earlier, I uh, I was like, wow, he looks very McCready in It. Yeah. But this is, you know, four years before that, or five years, 80 or 81 was the thing. 81. The thing was 81? Yeah. No. 80. 80. I think it was 80. 80. Because Empire is 80. And it was like the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. yeah. I could say that with 70% confidence. No, but by this time, uh, I think Kurt Russell was still doing Disney movies. Yeah. Um, although they're, like, not dissimilar as far as, like, career paths, like... A giant megastars? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fucking... Well, we can go... I'm jump, getting ahead of myself, but, uh, Jeff Bridges' first role was, like, when he was an infant. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jesus. Uh, and also, you know, Kurt Russell, child star, also Disney yep. star. Yep. 
Certainly was. Um, if you had to classify this movie, I'm going to give you mine. All right. If you had to classify this movie in in our like time and date kind of way that we do it, would you agree with me that this this is a Saturday afternoon movie? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. n- nothing is really like crazy. Nothing is super like exploitive of anybody it's just kind of a it's just kind of a bland monster movie yeah well, with a with the ecological message yeah yeah i mean it's 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 shallow enough where i was able to like i started working on like setting up the podcast for monday yeah like you know and i i don't feel like i missed anything you know like plus i've seen this movie a dozen fucking times yeah um i started watching it Friday night, uh-huh. and I was like, "Nope, just it's not, it's not the right time." Yeah, like, no, it, it's like, definitely like I, I watched, I fired it up about ten o'clock this morning, yeah, and I would say, yeah, like Saturday, Saturday afternoon is the perfect time. Yeah, just put it on while you're doing like you're cleaning or something, or just you know, yeah, and like I, my standard, like while you're taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was checking my phone every once in a while, but like I wasn't, I wasn't so bored by this movie that I was like, like fuck it, and then just sticking around on my phone it was just like you know go on check reddit for a minute yeah go back to the movie don't really feel like i missed anything yeah i didn't rewind on anything i feel like again i just didn't feel like i missed anything yeah there's there's um, not there's not that much important plot i will say jessica lang is her character is so fucking shoehorned into this like plot wise like yeah yeah <laughs> Like, oh, she just happens to be floating in a boat. In the, oh, so wait, well, I'm getting ahead of myself again. But, hey, she just happens to show up. Like, you know, we're, we're told that her boat was destroyed. It blew up. We don't know why it blew up, but it just blew up while they were watching Deep Throat, of all things. Yeah. Um, I got trivia fact about that. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, it's more of a theory, I guess. Okay. We'll get to it. Um, But the scene where she wakes up is so fucking weird. Because, again, she's just been found on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Like, yeah. your odds of being found like that are just almost impossible. You're mm-hmm. just in this tiny little thing, like, drifting in an infinite fucking field of just nothingness. Yeah. Um, you know, AKA who, the ocean. Yeah. How <laughs> long has she been? You know, we don't know how long she's been there. She wakes up and she's just immediately like this ditzy, like, goofy, like, hee hee hee. Like, yeah. my name's Duan. It's like Dawn, but I just changed the A and the W. What? Yeah. That's <laughs> the most aggravating thing in this Dwan, movie. Her yeah. name is Dwan. Dwan. Why are you named like a guy you'd buy coke off of in front of Valentine's in like <laughs> 2002? Like, <laughs> that is an ultra Inside Albany reference right there. Sure is. <laughs> I think I might have known a Dwan or two. Yeah. Selling coke in front of Valentine's. Is it Dwan or Dwan? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she's like, we were watching Deep Throat. I'm the only person who could say Deep Throat saved my life. Are you delusional right yeah. now? <laughs> you're, you're talking about a bunch of people that died. Yeah, like everybody you know is dead. Uh, and we just, you know, you're lucky enough to have been found. Yeah. Oh, well, here it is. Yeah. Um, Honestly, my biggest gripe about this movie, like it, it, all in all seriousness. Oh, wow. You see your nipples. Oh, yeah. For a PG movie. <laughs> yeah. Didn't notice that before. Um, this movie takes so long to get going. Yeah, you don't see King Kong until maybe like it's like an it's movie. almost like fifty something minutes. Oh, I, I didn't check the time, but it was definitely. I thought it was at least like 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, it, that's way too long. <laughs> I'm here for Giant Monkey, not human drama. <laughs> um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Human drama is cool. Keeps the plot moving. We want the monster. Give us the. Give me the monster. Yeah. A lot sooner. Give me the big monkey. <laughs> Here for the monkey. <laughs> oh man. Um. I'm trying to think of other things that I liked, but I mean, I really, I really did enjoy this movie. But again, like you can definitely see the seams in some places. Like, Absolutely. I mean, the scene where he breaks out of the cage at the end, you can, you can definitely see where they tried to insert the shots of the robot that's not moving and it's just standing yeah. there like arms flailing. Yeah. 
<laughs> no. Th- Ooh, excuse me. There was some really good stuff. Actually, some of the shot setups are gorgeous. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like they the like the cinematographers really really did a good job. It's just a lot of it's spoiled by the weird blue screen effects. Because I don't don't think they had green screen at this point. It was blue. Uh, Yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. Uh, Some shitty, shitty, yeah, acting in front of, you know, screens. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, I mean, like, the scenes where, I mean, all the scenes where Jessica Lange is, like, in Kong's hand is just her in a mechanical hand in front of a movie screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Really all it is. Oh, man. I, I can't. Tell you how glad I was to see. Uh, I, I'm gonna butcher his last name, Rene Bergeron. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't. I'm not sure how to pronounce that myself. It's like Aubrey Jeanois. Yeah, Arber, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's Odo from Deep Space Nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bad guy from uh, uh, Police Academy Five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a Bergeron. It might be a Bergeron. Oh yeah, that sound that's Aubergine Aubergine. Oh, that sounds Aber- right. Yeah. Aubergine. Aubergine. Wow. Let's let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Jeff Bridges here. Like no shirt, shaggy hair. Just because beard. He, just done, he just got done fucking. Like, like yeah, hair. That's like, like you look at a guy like that, and you're like, his dick is so big, yeah. he's got a five skin. <laughs> that dude just fucked. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Jeff Bridges, do you fuck? I used to. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, now we can't say that we've never talked about Jeff Bridges' cock before. Yeah. Uh, there's a pre that, and now it's the post that. <laughs> what a world! What, what a world! world. <laughs> Oy vey! Yeah, they. I don't know. It's just, it's like, she didn't need to be in this movie at all. Like they, just, yeah, they they needed other to, than to reference Fay Ray. Yeah, they needed to fit that in, and they did not get, do a good job of like working <sighs> that in. No, like, have her be a fucking like somebody who works for the oil company. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, you know, it's do it better, yeah. be better. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better. Better actresses, better plot points, Papa John's. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else is there to be said about this? Um, that it's decent. It's just yeah, decent. It's. I mean, like, I'm not going to say, like, you know, watch it over the original. No. Yeah, I mean, you know, the original. Even the original. Better. The original is better, but it, even the original is kind of a tough watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is almost a hundred-year-old movie at this point. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I um while I was watching this, it uh I realized like how much Kong Skull Island kind of takes from this movie. Mm-hmm. Um even like the setup of like the island where like it's this island like permanently shrouded in like fog. Yeah. Uh and, and that you know in Skull Island it's you know it's permanently shrouded in like a storm. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they actually referred to it as Skull Island in this movie, did they? No, they didn't. Yeah, no, no. They did show the shape of it, though, and the shape kind of looks like a, like an ape skull. Yeah. Like in, in profile. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I actually, like, the scenes where they're doing the whole ceremony, like, for Kong, I thought were really cool. Yeah. But at the same time, like, this looks nothing like Southern California <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> this is definitely not the back lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're just so critical you're just so critical yeah I guess um, but I mean I like the whole like ceremony thing that was cool yeah um, the stuff on the island was good yeah like, they, I needed more of that I wanted more yeah like I, I didn't realize how little we get of like Kong in the wild like how like even in the original we get more of him like fighting other monsters and shit like he fights a tyrannosaurus like yeah he fought a giant snake in this one which <laughs> he did was, fight, I think it was, was a giant pretty, snake in the original too it was pretty rad like that was, yeah. a, good, that was a good fight scene he just snaps his mouth open yeah and I'm pretty sure that I, I'm like 90% sure that happens in the original too yeah probably yeah, that yeah. does that does ring familiar yeah um of course he did that in Godzilla vs. Kong I could be getting my monster movies. Yeah. Do you remember? So when they went into the hollow earth, that 
weird snake dinosaur thing grabbed him. I'm pretty yes. sure he ripped the mouth open of that thing. Uh, so I don't know. Absolutely. Maybe that's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe that's just a reference to this. Maybe. Um, I also noticed the there's a scene uh, in Jordan Peele's Nope um, that I think is very, very, very influenced by the Kong in the cage scene in this movie. Yeah, they are like incredibly similar really even in like the way like the background is set up because like not to get too spoilery but like the fucking what's his name there glenn from the walking dead stephen young yeah his character he he's like a former Great child actor. actor yeah 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 um oh what's that one movie mayhem yeah yeah that's a good movie um he's like a former child actor and he's running like this amusement park uh like out in the desert like near the horse ranch where you know, all this weird shit's going down. Yeah. The and whore, the whore's ranch, the whore's ranch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the whore's ranch. Um, and like his plan is to like lure this like UFO thing out, uh, and like have people witness it. And like, he does that in a scene. And that, that scene is like, I almost, I don't want to say shot for shot, but like, it's very, very, very close to the fucking Kong, you know, in the cage scene in this mm -hmm. movie. Uh, yeah, like I, that's a quite like if I ever get the chance to ask that question, I like I need to know because like it's yeah. incredibly similar. Yeah, yeah, and that's a weird like obscure poll like for you know. For like, that's the thing is like reading through some of the trivia and and other things like people seem to really enjoy this movie. Yeah, it never gets talked about. Yeah, like I do have fond like uh, like a fond remembrance of watching this movie. Like yeah, and yeah, I probably haven't watched it in. 15 years maybe i'm gonna say at least yeah uh yeah it never gets talked about it's just like oh yeah i like that movie it was good and then like that's about it yeah yeah i mean i didn't hate it i could see myself if i get in the mood for like you know a giant monkey movie yeah maybe i'll watch it yeah i would I, just not again pg movie yeah <laughs> jessica well, lang just dumping them out yeah it's, it was pg for the era yeah <laughs> nice side butt um yeah man uh just it's just okay like i think there, that's why it were, doesn't get talked it, it's like it's like a c plus yeah there were really great moments but it's it's just it's encased in mediocrity yeah I guess the, what it is. The bad parts really drag it down because they're yeah. really bad yeah it's just the pacing is not good yeah, I think it's what I think it's what my biggest deal is like. And there's a lot of like stupid character decisions too. I mean, like, I mean Jessica Lange's character is a fucking mess. Like, uh, just from, there's from no the consistency down. in her yeah, character. Yeah, but like the at the end, Charles Grodin, why the fuck would that guy run to the monkey, like as shit's going down? Yeah, because he gets stomped while he's he running. got fucking splattered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and again, like. Why? I mean, maybe I'm getting too real world here, but like as soon as people started rushing the fucking the side of the track where the thing is coming out, wouldn't like security be like, all right, we gotta get these people the fuck out of here? Like, we can't have this. My what the fuck are you doing moment? Yeah, was when Kong was on the loose in the city. Yeah, and the guy is riding his motorcycle, dumps it, and runs. <laughs> Dude, you're on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> but and like why are people still sitting there when he's breaking out of the cage like, yeah <laughs> fucking run <laughs> also why is an oil executive the MC of this entire event <laughs> you know they're known for their people skills yeah, and yeah their showmanship this freeze again yes yes yeah, it did it did who cares uh, yeah let me see here when we pause it and we play it and it's there like fast go, forward it's just, yeah I love the radar of the mountain. It looks like the Coors Light mountain. Yeah, like, it really did. It's supposed to be radar, but it's like this perfect, like, like abstract drawing of a mountain yeah. with like snow caps on it and everything. Like, Tap the Rockies, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you want to rate this movie? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What do you got for me? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go seven. I think. Really? Because it's enjoyable. It's good. It does have bad parts that drag it down, but like, yeah, there's. It's just like, it's 
I don't know. It is just forgettable for some reason. It really is. It's. Uh, I gotta go like five five. Really? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I am going a little high. You know, what? I'm sticking by it. I'm sticking by my seven. Hey, it's fine. Excuse it, me. If that's how you feel about it, that's how you feel about it. We've got, a, like you said, a stacked fucking cast. The effects for 1976, pretty fucking decent. Pretty good. Yeah. That monkey suit was pretty bitching. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the blue screen, green screen. Hmm, that, the, and there yeah. was so much of it and it was so bad. Yeah. Um, but like we get a lot of like, I think when people think like the King Kong ride, what they're thinking of is like the scenes from this movie of really? him in New York. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's much closer to, to that than it is to the original movie. Like, you know, the King, well now it's, it's, it's kind of like. You're more than the, the, the latest version of it. You're on Skull Island now. Yeah, uh, I've been on that version. And it's fucking is awesome. It, is it dope? Yeah, yeah. Because you're in like a tram with like like screens. I want to say like three D screens on each side. Okay. Um. So like you're going through like the jungle. And like one point, like fucking Kong like throws the thing off a cliff, and like it feels like you're fucking falling, and like you're really? tangled up in vines, and like there's that like little Tyrannosaurus things like all over. Like no shit. It's and you, you still do the thing at the end where you go by his face, like yeah, which is fucking awesome who doesn't want that like yeah 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 it does sound pretty fucking bad <laughs> i mean it is awesome um so yeah but like the scenes like when people think of that ride they're thinking of like you know when you're on the subway like the older version of that yeah ride. and like all of that i think is from this movie and, yeah you know, yeah because he tears up the subway train in this one yeah and i feel like again kong skull island is more like in line like in line with this movie than it is with like the original movie yeah you know and again, yeah. even the time period is the seventies for that movie. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Like when this movie is good, it's fucking great. There's just not enough of it. Yeah, it's just when it's bad, it's as it's as bad as it is great. It it's is, you know. until they get to the actiony kind of scenes, it's just super dry. Yeah, it's very, very dry. Yeah, it's like a maritime drama. Basically. Yeah, there's a stowaway. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, it does. It does take its time in getting to the monkey. Yeah, it's like you um, know, I'm, I'm adjusting to <clears throat> six five. Okay, six five. This is, I mean, for me, this is like, like if you had, it's like bad Jaws. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like you get to the monster eventually. It, it probably is even a cash in on that because original Jaws is like seventy five or seventy four. I think so. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so, I mean, this is, it's, this is probably cashing in. This is two years afterwards. Yeah. I want to say this is this was very, very rushed. Like, to the point where maybe when, when they started shooting, they hadn't even finished the script yet. They hadn't finished the monkey yet. I know yeah, that for sure. That I knew. They they were promised the world on that monkey, and they did not get the world when they, yeah. <laughs> when they received it. They got something. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like... Like Jaws, you've got the human drama, which is great. Like the the human drama in Jaws is fucking awesome. It's as good as the action. As the, as the monster action, yeah. In this, you have a, almost the same ratio of like actiony to peopley, but it's just not good. Like I don't care about these people. Like the only person you really wind up caring about is Jeff Bridges, as as Jack. Yeah. Um. Dwan is a fucking. She's just annoying. Like the yeah. the character is set up poorly. And I will say the the dudes are kind of shitty to her. Like oh yeah, Charles Grodin is straight up trading her like at one point for a yeah. fucking you know for like for the monkey. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and then you have Charles Grodin who is a cartoonish fucking supervillain in this. He's he's fu you know what he's Snidely Whiplash is who he is in this movie. <laughs> He might as well be doing some mustache, mustache twirling yeah. off to the side. So it's just like meh. Oh god. God damn Jeff Bridges is an American treasure. He really is. <laughs> he really is. A fucking dildo. <laughs> right, Charles Grodin, that is. Yeah, the scene where he's like, yeah, proudly, stridently, you know, stepping off the boat. I'm storming the beach. Yeah. I am a conqueror. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's where I'm at on that. So. All right. I like it. Maybe I'll watch it again. It's good-ish. It's 
It's yeah. good. It's good adjacent. Yeah. It's in the ballpark of good. <coughs> Are you ready for some trivia? Let us do some trivia. All right. All uh, right, folks. Before we get to the trivia segment of the podcast, we want to take a second to tell you about our friends over at Newsly. Newsly is an all-in-one super app for iOS and Android. It picks up the most trending articles on the web and topics that you choose at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural human voice. <laughs> That's right. Uh, for the first time ever, the entire web becomes listenable all in one place. Uh, you can browse articles from topics that you choose and start playing, uh, stop scrolling, and start listening to the web. Uh, you can follow any topic as specific as you like, from sports, tech, business, science, Bitcoin, or even the Cardassians from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> it will find you the latest articles and read them to you aloud. Uh, it, it, it's Star Trek specific. Uh, you can get yes. right down to it. Yep. Uh, they even have podcasts as well, believe it or not. Uh, you can explore trending podcasts from over 80 different countries. Uh, I will let you in on a little bit of a secret. You're going to find uh, the Big Dumb Monsters podcast there as well. Um, I actually have been uh, using this. Uh, I've been using Newsly to actually listen to the podcast lately. Have you really? Yes, I have. Well, uh, believe it or not, I have. Uh, they even have digital radio at Newsly. Uh, you can download and use Newsly for free now at www.newsly.me and uh, use the promo code DUMBM and you will get a one month free premium subscription. Uh, so check them out. Head over to newsly.me uh, and tell them, you know what? Tell them the Big Dumb Monster saying it. Yeah, do the thing. And now, back to the trivia. Uh, for shots of Kong holding Jessica Lang, the filmmakers built a giant hydraulic gorilla arm. Uh, the hands were six feet across, and the arms weighed um, 1,600 pounds each. Holy fuck. Yeah, they're pretty rowdy. Not gonna lie, I think I would be less afraid to be held in a giant monkey's hand than I would be like <laughs> in the mechanical monkey's hand. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, they weren't ready until shooting was well underway. Uh, when they were finally built, uh, Dino De Laurentiis was invited to the set to witness the test. He walked into the studio, and a giant arm extended in his direction. Then the middle finger slowly uncurled and extended itself. <laughs> <laughs> De Laurentiis broke up so did the arm it was frozen finger up for a week <laughs> can you imagine the money that went into that thing just yeah. in repairs yeah um, from what I know like I mean it was a fucking shit show like uh, the monkey like the robot monkey like all of it just was not working at all yeah uh, well I mean again Jaws that's why you don't get, obviously, it's why you don't get that much Jaws, because, because the, the, the robot, didn't, robot wor didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked very well in Jaws. <laughs> um, let's see. The 40-foot Kong was constructed with three and a half tons of aluminum frame covered with rubber and 1,000 pounds of Argentinian horse tails sewn into place individually. Its insides were comprised of uh, 3,100 feet of hydraulic hose and 4,500 feet of electrical wiring. And it was controlled by 20 operators and cost a total of $1.7 million. And that's in like 70s dollars. That's in $74, yeah. Yeah, so that's probably like probably like 5 mil, I'm going to say. It's like, like, like a billion dollars right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Rick Baker created and wore four ape suits. That's right, boy. A special undersuit with silicone-filled muscles uh, realistically depicted the appropriate musculature beneath the fur, because Rick Baker is apparently not built like a giant ape. Uh, the hands used animatronic extensions controlled by operators offset to give Kong appropriately uh, gorilla-like long limbs. All right. Yeah. The uh, the scene where he's blowing on Jessica Lang ridiculous yeah like the giant like Fucking Dizzy Gillespie Rick. cheeks like slow up <laughs> <laughs> oh that sounds horrible I should yeah no that sounds bad that sounds bad the the famous trumpeter Dizzy Gillespie yeah yeah who blew up his cheeks like that no 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 that wasn't Dizzy Gillespie it was uh, 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, it was, wasn't it? I don't think that's who you're thinking of. Um, Louis, yeah, Louis, Louis Armstrong. Louis, Louis Armstrong. Whatever. It's the trumpeter who blew up his cheeks like that. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Because, well, proper proper <laughs> trumpet technique is actually not to blow your cheeks up like that. Yeah. If you watch like a like a super professional. Oh, what's Dizzy Gillespie? All, All right. right. Never mind. But um, the like, quote unquote, proper technique is y- your fucking throat blows up like a toad. <laughs> She's just like a bullfrog. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hammer had also intended to to remake the movie a few years earlier, but it was scrapped after a few test reels were shot. However, some of the Hammer footage was used in a Volkswagen commercial, All right. which is weird as hell. Because what the hell does King Kong have to do with Volkswagen? Yeah, uh, it's the battles that they go through to fill your tank. Uh, isn't that what's uh, Rene Aubergenois? Yeah. Shit, how did we how did we settle on that pronunciation? Aubergenois. Aubergenois. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude says it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Volkswagen. Um. When Dwan explains how she came to be on the yacht that sank, she mentions that her friend Harry was going to take her to Singapore to put her in a movie. She also mentions. That when the yacht sank, everybody but her was below deck watching the adult movie Deep Throat from 1972. It's mentioned more than once, indicating that Dwan was going to star in a pornographic movie and that Harry was Harry Reams, the star of Deep Throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So not only do we have giant monkeys in this universe, but we also have a, a, a world in which Harry Reams dies in a yacht explosion. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Too bad he didn't use his dick as a flotation device. (laughs) He probably could have. If you've ever seen Deep Throat, which I have. (laughs) I don't believe... They used to... Oh, boy. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking... When they would do, like, Sunday night and, like, midnight movies at, like, the Spectrum and, uh, and the Madison... Every now and again, they would show, like, a deep throat or something like that. What? Like, yeah, behind yeah. the green door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember... Um, <laughs> Back when porno had stories. What was the fucking movie we saw? It was, like, the first 3D porno from, like, the 70s. <laughs> uh, you like... I just remember, like... Sitting there trying to wipe jizz off of yourself? I mean, the, dude, the place was packed. <laughs> packed, right? <laughs> the first time somebody got up to use the bathroom, some dude got up to, like, go to the bathroom, or, like... Uh, bathroom or like go get you know popcorn or whatever just get up and leave yeah people were like yeah <laughs> like, he's gonna jack it gonna jack off. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy people are pigs yeah uh men men are pigs yeah but uh yeah 73 to four now let's get the name it's entertaining <laughs> it's gross uh, Faye Ray was offered a cameo and she turned it down because she didn't like the script. Probably, yeah. She didn't need money at that point or anything, yeah. And it probably, I mean, it's, let's face it, not a great fucking script. It's really not. Yeah. Uh, seven different masks were created by Carlo Rimbaldi and molded by Rick Baker to convey various emotions. <laughs> Separate masks were necessary as there were. Too many cables and uh, mechanics required for all the extensions to fit into one single mask. So they would have like a, oh, this one's eyes are going to move. This one's mouth is going to move. That kind of shit. Um, The masks were comprised of a plastic skull over which were placed artificial muscle groups activated by cables, which entered the costume through Kong's feet. And the outer latex skins molded by Baker were placed over top. Uh, The mask used hydraulics to provide movement, so much like Mechanical Kong and hands, the facial expressions were controlled by a team of operators working offset uh, with control boards. To complete the look of a gorilla, Baker wore contact lenses so his eyes would resemble that of a gorilla's. Now, by the sounds of it, there were more people working this monkey than there were on screen. It It sounds like they had like a dozen people working the monkey. Yeah. That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work the monkey. Work the monkey. <laughs> well, 
We found this episode's title. Yeah, <laughs> working the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty dudes working the monkey. Yeah. How do you feel about working Rick Baker's monkey? <laughs> Whoa. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the World Trade Center, R.I.P. Uh, sequence was filmed twice uh, for a total cost of nearly two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. An August 1976 edition of Cinephile noted that the throng of approximately 45,000 background personnel was the largest crowd seen in a motion picture history to date. Oh, no shit. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking people. Yeah, 45, yeah. 45,000? Just crowding around. Uh, producer Dino De Laurentiis had two stipulations for remaking the film. Firstly, that it be set in the present day. And secondly, that it would feature the then newly constructed World Trade Center. Um, I saw in another trivia fact, kind of relevant to this, people who worked at the Empire State Building were mad that they weren't filming at the Empire State Building. <laughs> yeah, like they oh, dressed okay. in mon- they dressed in monkey suits and protested. <laughs> Hey, look, you know, I'll be the first to admit there are times in life when a protest is justified. It'd be the monkey movie. No, not, not so much. Yeah, not one of them. Not so much. The monkey fundamentalists. Solved, solved it. <laughs> Kong fundamentalists. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll have to edit that out. Stop it. I'll kill you. I have to put it down. <laughs> Play with your phone. That's what we need. Uh, fidget spinners. We need fidget shit. spinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a fidget spinner we can use. <laughs> uh, Roman Polanski, Michael Winner, and Sam Peckinpah were offered a chance to direct, but all turned it down. I don't know that I want to see Roman Polanski's King Kong. Yeah, I, I actually, you Sam know what? Peckinpah's King Kong. Like enough kids have. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Again, if we had the stream deck, well, 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 yeah. well. <laughs> we're getting a fucking stream deck. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Sick. Uh, Gino De Laurentiis approached Ray Harryhausen, but providing the about providing the stop motion effects for I'll Kong. Explain later. Uh, <laughs> Harryhausen turned him down Just as he felt that twelve months wasn't sufficient enough time to deliver such a detailed shoot. Uh, the sound effects used for Kong. Oh, this is a separate fact altogether, and I didn't put a space here. <laughs> so, of, of a detailed shoot. Walking style. You just pull all the punctuation out of the trivia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this fact is going to be interesting for John. Oh, by the way. Yeah, so we almost had a Harryhausen King Kong. Oh, all right, stop motion Kong. Yeah. Well, I mean, we already, the original was a stop motion Kong. The original was. And th- there was some stop motion in this. So, they wanted Harryhausen to do it, but yeah. he's like, no. That's yeah, the, the timeline is a little too tight. The, the, they did the, like I said, the, the dude in the monkey suit looked really good in this movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, the sound effects used for Kong were reused in the Dragon Ball anime franchise as the sound effect for the great ape forms of the Saiyans. There you go. Yep. There you go, John. Have you seen the, uh, the movie yet? I saw it today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Right. It was all computer animated. Oh, oh. really? Oh, gross. Yeah. It looked a lot like the last Dragon Ball Z movie. Because no, that anime style was like terrible. The, it looks like the cut scenes in like a video game. Ew. But like movie quality. So, I, if he, if the main characters were Piccolo and Gohan, so I'm happy. <laughs> I The last, like... It's been seriously like, 20 years since I've had, like, familiarity with, like, Dragon Ball. Really? It was the last, like, time I was into Dragon Ball. Oh, fuck. What was the um, the PlayStation 2 game where it was, like, basically the cartoon and then, like, the, there were, like, fight sequences where you were controlling it, like, in between, like, the cartoon sequences. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember the name of that. That's how fucking long There it was. was uh, so, back in the day when we had, like, Flash games... On the Cartoon Network website, they had a lot of Flash games. Yeah, yep. there was a Dragon Ball Z one, and it was like it was just a fighting game, and it was like it w- it basically worked on like a rock paper scissors mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's the whole basis of Fire Emblem, and I love it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you have the uh, the GameCube Fire Emblem game, that goes for serious fucking loot right now. Mm-hmm. They, I, it, until they re-release it and then... Yeah, I just sold my uh, my PS2 copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, uh, which uh, goes for like $200, $300 on eBay. Yeah. I got 66 bucks for it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. My never-opened mint, uh, not greatest hits version of Final Fantasy VII is essentially my retirement plan. I had, <laughs> to keep I had an open, I had an um, open version of the not greatest hits version of Final Fantasy VII, and then my PlayStation chewed on it. Ooh. Yeah, uh, the, the person who bought it for me, like I trust, like they explained it to me, like and it, it fucking made sense. Um, but basically, like yeah, they're they're selling for eBay. Well, they're posted for you know on eBay for like two or three hundred. But what they're not doing is selling for two or three hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, he even, like, he even broke it down. He's like, there's 163 copies of this game. Like, you know, they, like, he, he, to the point where he's like, one hasn't sold in, like, X amount of months. Mm-hmm. He's like, so if I buy it, it's going to sit here. Uh, he's like, if you sell it, you're probably going to get, like, 150. Like, with taxes, you'll get, like, you know, X amount off. With shipping, another amount. He's like, so I'll give you, like, this amount. I'm like, I don't care. I just don't. Like, it's yeah. still twice what I paid for the game when it first came out. Yep. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have one last... Side note, the reason I was selling it because I want to buy the arcade one-up uh, cabinet of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, for oh. the studio when it comes out in a couple weeks. Nice. Yeah. Um, our last trivia fact here, uh, when the crew is shown the satellite images of the, the island, it looks like the side profile of a gorilla skull. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. Yep. So this is the Jessica. I keep I keep almost saying Jessica Han. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, no. Nope. Jessica Lang doped up and uh, being uh, offered up to the monkey. Yeah. I don't. Realistically, I don't understand why Kong wants women. He can't do anything with them. He doesn't eat them. They don't take care of him. Yeah. He can't fuck them. Kong want woman. Kong want woman. Yeah. He's a tit man, though. I mean, he <laughs> fucking he is. scrapes your fucking top off at one point. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Fucking dudes, man. <laughs> is he an ape or a pig? Is that it for the, uh, the trivia set? That is it. Excellent. We are uh, moving right along. Moving right along into the better known as we will start off with I'm going to go on the pronunciation on this with director John Gillerman. Uh, maybe possibly Guillermin. It's probably Guillermin, but I'm if he's in America, it's Gillerman. not. You're yeah. in America, son. This is Gillerman. <laughs> You're in Gillerman country. <laughs> um, Look at him with a fucking pipe there. That's a man's man. Yeah. That's like a that's like some Teddy Roosevelt shit right there. <laughs> I, like, as pretentious as it is, I want to start smoking a pipe. <laughs> Um, he has actually directed some stuff of note. Uh, he did direct the sequel to this, King Kong Lives, in 1986, uh, with uh, Linda Hamilton, and uh, I forget who the dude is in that movie. It's forgettable. Yeah. Is it Paxton? I don't think it's Paxton. <laughs> is it Pullman? <laughs> Paxton Pullman, let's see. Uh, neither. Neither, yeah. Neither of those people. Uh, yeah, nope. I am completely making that up, and we're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Kerwin. Brian Kerwin. I don't remember. I thought it was like somebody known, but apparently not. Uh, Sorry, also, Brian. <laughs> yeah. He also directed Sheena. Uh, this is the Sheena, I believe it is. Uh, many uh, is many an 80s uh, gentleman became a man to Tanya Roberts. Uh, yep. Yeah. This is the Sheena I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you remember Midge from that '70s show, like she was even hotter in the in the '80s. Yeah, uh, yeah, and she was in a, a Tarzan ripoff where she played Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Yep. Uh, yeah, this like a stunningly hot blonde <laughs> uh, who grew up in Africa of all places. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and is like a kind of like a Tarzan type character. I want to say that was also rated PG, and I was also like inappropriately allowed to watch that. Uh, aside from Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, uh, he directed the 78 version of Death on the Nile, uh, the Hercule Poirot uh, mystery, 
Uh, Agatha Christie, I believe, is the the author of that. Uh, he also wrote and directed The Towering Inferno in 1974. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on. Aside from The Towering Inferno, he also directed Shaft in Africa in 1973. Shaft is real. He went to Africa and everything. <laughs> also, Tarzan goes to India. So he's like, he's the guy you want to like take he's, your established. He's ID the goes to guy. Yeah, and like transport him someplace else. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see hell heaven or hoboken well <laughs> i tell i'll take hell yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> two of those seem to be the same thing <laughs> uh and that's about the all the stuff of note from john gillerman uh, <coughs> moving on to our leading man jeff bridges the motherfucking dude yeah as i said american treasure jeff bridges probably best known as the dude in the big lebowski I remember going to see that movie in the theater and being the only person who thought it was hysterical. Like, really? I, it was like Cape Fear, dude. I was, I was like De Niro. <laughs> like, no joke. I am dying laughing. My date is just like, what the fuck are you laughing at? Like, <laughs> silence from the theater. And there's me, like, just enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> How high were you? Not very. I was like eighteen. Uh, oh yeah, because that that like they, that DQs you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't start partying until until like college. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, nineteen ninety eight. Jesus Christ, that movie is twenty four years old. Holy shit! Why you gotta do that to a guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disturbing. <laughs> um, fucking Jeff Bridges is still putting out quality shit. I will put uh, a, an endorsement on the old man. I just watched that on Hulu. Uh, I as have it came out. I have heard both good and bad things. It's very dry. It yeah. is definitely like you know aimed to the older demographic. Like mm -hmm. a lot of talking, uh, but it's it was very good. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, we'll uh, we'll give it a thumbs up. Um, let's see. I mean, others. Oh, the Kingsman Golden Circle. He is like the. Uh, like Michael Caine's character, that analog. He's like the American version in that. Uh, yeah. I, I dig those Kingsman movies, too. I think I've seen the yeah part Tom's of the first the one. Up. They are, I mean, I, I, what's his name? Mark, Fucking, uh, Mark, Mark Millar, Millar comics. Yeah. comics, right? Yeah. Uh, any, anytime they, they adapt to stuff, it's usually been pretty good. Uh, and uh, yeah, both of, I think both of those movies are really, really great. Uh, moving on. Let's see what else. I mean, there's so The Little much Prince shit. was good. Little Prince. I don't know if I saw that. It's, I mean, it's realistically, it's a kid's movie, but. Yeah, I, I remember, like, when I was young, like, there were Little Prince shorts on Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. uh, like, those I remember. Yeah, because it was a book, series of books. Yeah. I think something. it's, like, Danish or something, like. French? Maybe? So it's probably, yeah. Fucking, your, yeah. Late yeah. Petite Prince. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. But I, I do remember those shorts when I was a kid. Uh... Uh, let's see. Uh, Crazy Heart. That was a good movie. Oh, you're just gonna the, just gonna skip right past True Grit and Tron. No, I wasn't actually. That uh, was legacy, the one huh? I saw. Like I zeroed <laughs> in on when it came back to the screen. Uh, where he's like the older, like washed up, like country singer. Yeah, that was a good movie. But yeah, True Grit is fucking amazing. Uh, uh, Tron. I, I enjoy both of the Tron movies. If, yeah. So I was hesitant about True Grit. Yeah. Because I like old he westerns. The fucking Duke. Yeah. I, yeah. And it's like it is John Wayne. How do you? How do you out John Wayne? John Wayne. He didn't out John Wayne him, but I think he, 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 li he lived up to the character. I think. Yeah. Uh, and Tron Legacy was so fun. Yeah, that was the first movie I ever saw on IMAX. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, fun movie, awesome fucking soundtrack by Daft Punk. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> one year at Comic Con, I saw this fucking awesome, awesome Daft Punk cosplayer. Uh, I mean, perfect da Daft Punk cosplayer. Yeah. Turned out to be the guy from Daft Punk. <laughs> yeah. Weird. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I said hello to him. Great costume. And he started speaking French to me. Yeah, no. I, wow, you have like a handler, like a professional handler. Oh, oh, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put it out here. Tron Legacy. Better than Tron. Yeah. Oh, definitely more entertaining. 100%. Yeah. Um, I mean, fucking Obadiah Stane and Iron Man. Uh, we don't have the modern MCU without uh, an awesome Iron Man movie in 2008. 
and he that's true. Awesome villain. Yeah, and he he was a big part of that movie being good. Yeah, let's, let's not blame the modern Marvel verse on. Let's credit <laughs> him with building to end. I am saying that as a diehard fan of of anything MCU at this point. <laughs> <laughs> just you've sold me a ticket just by telling me the release date. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm there. Anyway. Moving on. I mean, still moving on with Jeff Bridges anyway. Have you seen Tideland? I have not. That movie is fucking dark. Yeah, what like, is it about? Oh, my God. I, I, like, I vaguely remember the name. Oh, that sounds cheerful. Okay. So, Terry Gilliam movie. Oh, yeah. Okay, boy. Oh, yeah. Three quarters of the movie, he's dead. Huh. And it's his daughter imagining all these scenarios and doing things with him. <laughs> And he's just a fucking corpse. Jesus Christ. It is so good. It is like that is Terry Gilliam firing on all cylinders. Yeah, yeah. And it is just uncomfortable to watch. Damn. I, I Like, I vaguely remember the name, but I do not remember this movie at all. Yeah. Oh, I gotta watch that. I fucking um, love Terry Gilliam movies. We were only on like... What is? Th- why are you shaking your head, John? It's not a horror movie. It's like it's not scary. It's just Terry dark Gilliam's and uncomfortable. Shit. Like, yeah, Doctor Parnassus. Uh, fucking that uh, movie was really good. Yeah, I mean Brazil. He did um, uh, Quixote, didn't he? Like, or, yeah, I still haven't seen that. Yeah, the one with Adam Driver. Yeah, is that what it was called? The isn't it? Uh, or was it like some weird title? But I think it was the man of the man of the mind. It's like something. Oh, okay, yeah. but it was Don Quixote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arlington Road. Did you ever see that movie? Maybe. That is a fucking great movie that is like completely underrated. Um, Jeff Bridges is like a an expert on like domestic terrorism, and like his wife was killed by like the, like in like some like domestic terror like a Ruby Ridge type of thing. Okay. Um, and he's like a professor on it, and like his neighbors move in. His neighbor is uh, Tim Robbins. And, like, he starts, like, suspecting that, like, his neighbor is, like, tied up in, like, this, uh, like, this, like, domestic terrorist, like, ring. Uh, I will give spoilers on a 23-year-old movie. Um, but by the end of it, like, you know, he figures out, oh, he is a terrorist. And, like, he, uh, Jeff Bridges is, like, a like, former, like, FBI or something like that. Like, he's, like, he's advising them. Yeah. And, uh, like, ever since his wife died, like, he hasn't been allowed to come back to work. So, like, by the end of it, he figures everything out. And, like, he runs to tell, like, all of, you know, the people at the FBI that people used to work with. And, like, uh, he's, like, all just crazy. It's basically the end of, like, Invasion of the Body Snatchers where, like, the dude's just frayed and, like, freaking out. And he's, like, yeah, he's just trying to tell him, like, oh, my God, this, this you know, there's a bomb. This shit's going to blow up. And they're, like, wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. Like, the only person, like, who's not supposed to be here right now is you. Yeah. And like, boom! This fucking bomb goes off, and like, it turns out Tim Robbins flame like flames him, <laughs> frames him for this whole fucking like domestic terrorist bombing yeah. shit. Like, it's fucking crazy movie. It's so good. That uh, reminds me of a. Uh, there, I think there was a David Duchovny movie that was kind of like that. I think it was David Duchovny. All right. Um, I want to say Joan Cusack is uh, Tim Robbins' is what? Yeah, yeah. We're still only, like, in 1999, and, yeah, he has so many fucking good movies. Uh, the Big Lebowski, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't know The Big Lebowski at this point, just, yeah, turn everything off. Go watch The Big <coughs> Lebowski. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know how you could live your life that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it's a movie I quote regularly I think, to this day. I think for people that haven't seen it and or probably haven't wanted to see it, they probably think it's just a weed movie. Yeah. It is so much more than just a weed movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Fisher King, I, I'm told that's a good movie. I, like... It's one of those, like, magic hobo movies. Like, I just... <laughs> I can't get into that. Like, I can't. Yeah, but it's a Robin Williams one, though. Yeah, even though it is Robin Williams. Is it, uh, yeah, it's the one where he's a radio DJ. Yeah, I think Tom Waits is in this. Another Terry Gilliam movie, actually. Yeah. I want to say Tom Waits. Yeah, Tom Waits is definitely in this movie. Uh, let me just confirm that. Maybe. You know what? In my world, Tom Waits is in the movie. <laughs> he's, my world is way better. He's not in the, the top credits. So. Tom Waits is in everything. Yeah. Tom Waits is in that monkey suit right there. <laughs> look how look at that awful blue screen. Yeah, that is pretty bad. That's so bad. Again, mechanical hand in front of a movie screen. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Last Unicorn. I know I've seen that movie. I don't remember anything about it. 
I don't it's think an I have movie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We mentioned well, we're watching uh, King Kong '76. Yeah. Uh, we are. This is like when he's you know lesser known show. I mean, he's in the Last Picture Show. Uh, it was 1971. Um, but like I said, I mean, he goes back his first appearance 1951 uh, as an infant. Is uh, that the company she keeps? Was Lloyd Bridges his father? Lloyd Bridges is his father. Yeah, Bo okay. Bridges is his brother. Uh, he was in uh, Lloyd Bridges' show, Sea Hunt, uh, in 1958 uh, through 1960. Uh, and then on the Lloyd Bridges show, yeah. Uh, let's see. Moving on to Charles Grodin, the extremely unlikable Charles Grodin. <laughs> He's got the most punchable face. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I never understood why people liked Charles Grodin. But it's because he's so unlikable. Like, yeah. when you need that... Well, not when you need. When you needed. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah. He died uh, 2021, so not that long ago. Yeah. A year and, a, year and change ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was just... Just twatty. Um, I will say... Uh, I don't know if it's his best-known role, but probably one of his more popular ones. Midnight Run. It's it's going to be that and Beethoven. Yeah. I mean, Midnight Run is a, a, a classic, classic movie. It's him and De Niro... Um, um, no, that movie that he was in with Martin Short, Clifford, Clifford, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, he was in stuff up until 2017. Uh, let's see anything. Eh, Law and Order in 2012. Uh, Clifford was 1994. Wow, he didn't do anything from 94 to 2006. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, Beethoven second, and Beethoven in ninety two and ninety three. Uh, I forgot he's in So I Married an Axe Murderer at the end. Uh, Is he? Anthony Lapaglia like commandeers his car. He tries to commandeer his car. He's like, I'm not giving up my car. <laughs> like he ends up driving him to the to the hotel where Mike Myers is staying. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, Midnight Run. Yeah, I, I I highly highly recommend that movie. Like. A mob, like, comedy, drama, dramedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I hate that word. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good word, uh, but that's a great movie. I, I recommend it. Uh, Ishtar. Yeah, the, the punchline of a movie that is Ishtar. <laughs> um, for a while, like, that was, like, the go-to joke for, like, a bad movie. Like, yeah. Uh, like, uh, uh, but apparently, like, people are like, it's actually not a bad movie. Like, it gets, like, decent review, like... In retrospect, is remembered fonder than it was at the time. Apparently, yeah. Uh, I remember the watching the Incredible Shrinking Woman a lot when I was a kid too. With uh, what's her name, uh, Lily Tomlin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Charles Grodin, I think, plays her husband in that movie. Let me see. Hold on. Am I? Is it your husband? I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, he is her husband. Ned Beatty. Ned, yeah, he's like, uh, I want to say he works for like the company that makes the shit that makes her shrink. Weird. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Although, in the cover art, she is on a giant monkey, yeah, so that's relevant. a giant gorilla for some reason. I don't on a skateboard. <laughs> uh, Heaven Can Wait. Uh, I remember, uh, I don't think I've ever seen that, actually. Uh, the Heartbreak Kid. Uh, I want to say I've seen the original. I know I've seen the remake with uh, with Ben Stiller, which is actually pretty funny. Yeah, I I stopped watching Ben Stiller movies a long time ago. <laughs> um, he is in Rosemary's Baby, nineteen sixty eight. I can't believe that movie is that old. I thought it was just like the seventies. Uh, um, yeah, it would have had to have been sixty eight because. Godfather was 70, right? Yeah. Or 71. 72. Was it 72? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not like we just watched a 10 episode miniseries on the making of The Godfather. Right? Yeah, but like, <laughs> because Rosemary's Baby plays into that a lot. So it I does, figured it yeah, was like, yeah. like closer to that. Uh, the Virginian, which comes up a lot on this show. Yep. Uh, that might be it as far as like the notable stuff for Charles Grodin. Uh, he was in the 1954 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Is that like the Disney one with, uh, uh, is it Lloyd Bridges? No, uh, Douglas, Kirk Douglas. It is the Disney one. Mm. 
Moving on. Uh, Jessica Lange, who plays Dewan in this movie. I that fucking is, hate her. It's so dumb. This character is ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, she is a uh, she's a pretty good actress in a lot of notable stuff. No, uh, Jessica Lange's great. Yeah. The, the character that they wrote for her is fucking, fucking trash. Terrible. Yeah, they did not do her justice in this movie. Uh, she is uh, probably most known recently for the American Horror Story stuff that she did. Uh, I don't believe she's doing that stuff anymore. Yeah, this is the, the blow-drying scene. You ever get a blowjob from a giant monkey? <laughs> and that's the title for this episode. <laughs> uh, she played Joan Crawford in the Feud uh, miniseries, which is actually pretty good. It's about her and fucking, uh, uh, what's her name, Betty... Uh, Christ. Come on, you can do it. I can do it. If Betty who? Betty Davis? Betty Davis, yeah. They fucking hated each other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it was all about that. They made um, all, not all about Eve. Uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, which is a batshit crazy movie. That movie is so good. Yeah, it is very, very good and so fucking crazy. No more wire haggers ever. That's Mommy Dearest. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mommy Dearest. Uh, uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane is... Uh, uh, I would do uh, such and such if I wasn't in this wheelchair. That's right. But yeah. you are, Blanche! <laughs> you are in the wheelchair! I get those two mixed up all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Hoo -ah. Oh, by the way, I uh, just put down a uh, North Coast Brewing Company Rasputin... Old Rasputin. Uh, yeah, old Rasputin, sorry. Russian Imperial Stout. We don't do those new Rasputins. Yeah, fuck that uh, new shit. No. We do an old school Rasputin. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving back to the uh, to the uh, better known as. That's the thing we're doing. That's the segment. <clears throat> hey, now. Um, she was in the Horace and Pete show with, uh, it was like Louis C.K. and Bill Burr, I think. Uh, that was like a, like a little like short thing that they did for a while. That got like a lot of good critical acclaim. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for reasons uh, beyond <laughs> control. Louis C.K. Louis C. reasons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's starting to make a comeback. Yeah. Um, she was in the movie Broken Flowers with Bill Murray. Uh, that was a pretty decent movie. Um, he's like this like old like playboy type of character. Yeah. And, like, he finds out he has, like, a daughter or something like that. So he goes back and, like, try, like through, like, old women, like, older, like, women he slept with in the past. Like, he tries to figure out who the daughter is. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, um, I keep intending to watch Titus, but never get around to it because I hear it's really good. It's the one with uh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard that's really good. I, I also have not seen that. It's a Shakespeare uh, play, I believe. Uh, yeah. yeah, Titus Andronicus. Oh, excuse me. This also, is... uh, Titus Andronicus, really good band. Like, <laughs> really good. Uh, she is in a movie that I referenced earlier, Cape Fear, which is fucking amazing. Um, actually, Amanda and I, one of our first dates was to go see uh, Cape Fear at, uh, at the Madison. The uh, De Niro version yeah. or the... Uh, Robert Mitchum. Robert Mitchum. No, yeah. it, was, it was the De Niro version. Yeah. Uh, which is fucking awesome. They, uh, they both are so good. Yeah. It's an intense movie. It's really good. I almost, I almost like the Robert Mitchum version better. Almost. Yeah. But like, uh, <laughs> they're, the, the they're, they're neck and neck. The Niro one is so fucking good. Yeah. This was actually her first role. I did not realize that. Yep. I think it actually said introducing Jessica Lange. Yeah. If I remember correctly. It did. Credits. Dewan. 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 I uh, hate her. Yeah. I hate her so much. I almost wish that Kong just killed her. <laughs> that would have been a good turn. <laughs> Uh, moving on, John Randolph, who was the ship captain. Like I, the like half the movie, I'm like, who is this fucking guy? He's Clark Griswold Senior in National Lampoon. Oh shit! <laughs> Taught me everything I know about exterior lighting. <laughs> <laughs> She's a beaut, Clark. Uh, that is one of the few movies that I, I like. I need to watch it every Christmas. Like I don't, I don't like Christmas movies. Really? I don't like Christmas music. I don't like Christmas. I, I, I see. I like. I like Christmas. I, I, I like. I like my kids opening gifts, and being happy. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, Christmas can go fuck itself. See, I like the minute Christmas is over, it can go fuck itself. But I like that like 
three weeks ahead of time where you know you get the music on the radio like it's just fucking oh, it's a nice no, feeling you know? I, I just i hate christmas music oh that's a movie i have to watch at christmas time christmas vacation christmas yeah <laughs> what did christmas do to you nick <laughs> Anyway, before we open that dark, dark door. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it right now. Uh, what else has he been in? Uh, let's see. Uh, Moving right along. Uh, you've got mail. Hey, how about that? Romantic comedy with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. <laughs> Show me on this doll where the angel touched you. Speaking of, Touched by an Angel, 1996. Uh, he played Horace Weidenberg in that. Uh... <laughs> let's see er uh he was the original frank costanza on seinfeld uh he played frank costanza for one episode uh famously replaced by jerry stiller who fucking was superior the, yeah, in that role absolutely fucking amazing in that role uh i quote frank costanza way more <laughs> than i am willing to admit uh, he was also in Married with Children. I, I vaguely remember this episode, Al Bundy's shoe dick, <laughs> uh, where he's like a private eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in case we haven't mentioned enough, Married with Children is a great, great show. Yeah. Uh, I still, I'm still holding out hope for our uh, Married with Children centric side podcast. I'm so down <laughs> for that. <laughs> Uh, episode called, by episode review. This title would not fly today, but it would be awesome if we can call it a fat woman came into the store today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Who's going to cancel us? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you have to be somebody Again, to be we're canceled. We're quoting the show. Like, yeah. It's a reference to the show. Anyway. <laughs> it's called the No Man Podcast. No Ma oh, that's awesome. That's got to exist already. That it probably exist. does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he uh, apparently was Roseanne and Jackie's father on the Roseanne TV series uh, in two episodes of that show. Huh. Um, we have old people solving murders. Uh, he was in we do. two episodes of Matlock. Uh, he was on Who's the Boss? Uh, also, oh, no, another old people solving murders, Trapper John MD. Uh, he didn't solve murders. I thought he did solve murders on that show. Trapper John? No. Yeah. That was a mash offshoot. He was just a doctor. I know it was a oh, mash offshoot, but wasn't like a serious title. drama. Yeah. What? MD's in the title. Probably yeah, no, I thought yeah. was, I thought it was like a like for some reason, even though Mash was a comedy, it was like a drama like spinoff of of like his character. Yeah, but I don't think he was solving murders. I don't know, maybe. I don't I'm, know. I'm I'm pretty I'm gonna say I'm pretty positive. At he was, some point between nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty six, a fucking murder got solved on yeah, the Yeah, maybe. Show. Maybe <laughs> a murder. <laughs> that qualifies as old people solving murders. <laughs> I have solved a murder. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Pritzy's Honor, which is uh, that mob movie with Jack Nicholson and uh, Angelica Houston, I believe, is also in that. Uh, Before she looked like Alan Rickman. <laughs> uh, he was in the TV show Dynasty for several episodes, like three episodes of that. Uh, I think this was a, an old person solving murder show. Quincy Emmy, very similar to Trapper John. Yeah. Yeah. There's more likely a murder solved in that one. <laughs> uh, Family Ties, Private Benjamin, uh, two also big uh, like shows of the day. Late Wasn't that a movie? movie? It's a movie and a TV series. Movie with Goldie Hawn. Yeah. Uh, I remember the TV series. I remember like watching it when I was really young like with my mom. Okay. Uh, when was that on? For? I, just, just as a reference, I need to know now. 82. So yeah, I could have been like three years old at the time. Three to four, and it went off in 83. Yeah. Uh, that might be it for his notable stuff. I just want to make sure. That, you know, uh, MASH. Oh, that's right. He was in MASH. Yeah, the TV series. Yeah. Uh, somebody, else was, was, uh, somebody else was in MASH the movie, too. I don't remember yeah. if they made Rene that. Yeah, Rene Abergeron. That's it. Aubergeois. Aubergeois. That's a... Uh, he played... Um, uh, he's the priest. He's the priest. He? Yeah, yeah. Father Mulcahy. Uh, yeah, we're going to move on. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of the devil, yeah. Rene Aubergenois, uh, he was the science -y guy for the, uh, for Petro, was it Petrochem was the name of the company? Petrox. Petrox, Petrox. Uh, because it was, they were spoofing the idea of pet rocks. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> 
Man, weren't the seventies awesome? <laughs> uh, that's right, Rene Aubergenois. I, he died I, recently. I guess so. I guess so. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. He was seventy nine at the time, so he hung in there. I guess. Uh, the Patriot. He was in The Patriot. He was a priest in that movie too. Mm -hmm. And this is another underrated movie. I will say it's basically American Braveheart, but yeah. still a fucking good. Watch. It is a hundred percent American <laughs> Braveheart. <laughs> Uh, it was the pre Plot, plot is meltdown. Dave. Slightly different. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, let's see. What other notable stuff was he? You're going to have to scroll like way down. Yeah. Uh, he did a lot of voice work over the years. He did some Marvel voice work, Ben 10, Pound Puppies. <laughs> <laughs> not a porn, I promise you. Uh, he was on Archer. I mean, it might have been, yeah, but probably not that was. one. Rule was it rule thirty four or whatever? <laughs> rule thirty four of the internet. <laughs> yeah. If it exists, there's porn of it. Uh, he was on Grey's Anatomy, Criminal Minds. He was on Bored to Death on HBO, the okay, criminal uh, not criminal detective show with um, Ted Danson and uh, fucking Jason Schwartzman. Ugh. It was actually a good show. Very good show. You'll never convince me of that. There's a third person on that show too. I have to check just to fucking. Zach Galifianakis. That's it, Zach Galifianakis. Thank you. Uh, I like Zach Galifianakis's comedy. I don't like his acting in anything. I could see that he was a, he was a good comedian. He uh, walked past me one year in the comedy line at Bonnaroo. It was two thousand and seven. So before he like really took off. It was like I think um, literally the week before the Hangover came out because we saw yeah. the Hangover after the festival. Because like before that, he had Between Two Ferns, and then yeah. His, he had like a stand-up special on his stand-up special show. and the movie Comedians of Comedy. Yeah, with a, with uh, Oswald. Um, what's her name? Maria, Maria Bamford. Bamford. I just pounded the table after we yeah. specifically <clears throat> told somebody not to do that. And my celebrity look-alike <laughs> titties. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's right, Kong's. Uh, yeah, busting them titties out. As Proclivity for titties. Yeah. Uh, yes, and fucking dudes, man. And my uh, uh, comedians of comedy was Zach Galifianakis, Maria Bamford, Patton Oswalt, and my celebrity lookalike Brian Posehn. <laughs> fucking awesome dude! I, I've met him several times. What? You do. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to him and fucking Jerry Duggan at a table at Comic Con one. Oh, the Daredevil or the. Uh, not Daredevil. Comic um, writer. He's done a lot. He Deadpool. Wrote, the Deadpool team. Deadpool, theme. yeah. He worked for G4, too, back in the day. His Chewbacca comic was really good. I uh, He's one of my favorite, favorite writers. He's doing... Uh, is he still doing X-Men, possibly? I don't remember. I don't know. He was at least... At one point, he was writing all of the comics. Yeah, yeah. His Deadpool run was awesome. The one him and Brian Posehn did. That's why he had to stop being on Brian Posehn's Nerd Poker. Oh, because he was writing so much Because he was shit. writing so many comics. He just didn't have time. <laughs> Uh, oh shit, yeah. Uh, we should probably mention he is Odo in uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yep. Uh, he's on the. He was also on Enterprise. Ezra is his character. I I did love that character on Deep Space Nine. Uh, speaking of, while well, we're on the subject of Star Trek, before I forget, it is eighty dollars to get a picture with Captain Pike at Comic Con, and I might pay that eighty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's, I fucking really dig that show. <laughs> Eighty dollars for a picture, that though. Is very get fucked. That is cheap as far as that shit goes. It shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty bucks is good. <laughs> You're literally just standing there. Yeah. Still, fucking Captain Pike. I love Strange New Strange New Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, but still, like. Anyway, let's take a picture of the motherfucker from across the room. I don't care. <laughs> uh, we mentioned Odo. That's probably the thing he's most known for. Uh, I also mentioned he's in Police Academy 5, uh, The Patriot. Yep. Uh, oh, wait. I have to go through because I want to make sure. Poltergeist, The Legacy. There was, there was a, a Jumanji TV, TV series? There was a yeah, it was a cartoon, I think. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. There's also a Savage Dragon TV series. I did point. not know that. Yeah, uh, it was on for, I want to say it's animated. Let's, uh, let's test that theory. They were turning a lot of... Yeah. They were turning a lot of comic books into cartoons at one point. I, uh, I honestly, yeah. They, oh, okay, I do remember this cartoon. I want to say I watched this cartoon. Uh, 
Jim Cummings did the voice of the Savage Dragon. Is not... That's not how you say that. Is he not the voice of, like, Winnie the Pooh? I don't know. He's the voice of, like, everything. And Frank Welker, the guy who almost the voice of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a... Yeah, he's Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> so he's Winnie the Pooh and the Savage Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I have read very little Savage Dragon comics. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd never read one, and then I, 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 a couple months ago, I, I, I scanned all of my comics. Yeah, Frank Welker does like the other half of everything that needs voice work. Yeah, um, I scanned my comic collection into an app, and I, apparently, I have some Savage Dragon comics. In Fucking it. Ruth Buzzy, are you kidding me? <laughs> what? She doesn't have a, a a character, so did she play herself on this cartoon? <laughs> For 26 episodes? I don't think so. Well, there's another person without a uh, character reference. There's probably just a shitload of characters. Peter Cullen. Isn't he uh, Optimus Prime? Yes. Yeah. Dawn Lewis, she was on A Different World, the TV show, the <laughs> spinoff of the comedy show. Uh, no, the Cosby show is what I'm trying yep. to say. Uh... Damn. Anyway, moving yeah. on. Huh. I, today I learned that Savage Dragon was a cartoon. <laughs> Julius Harris. He played was, Bone. Was barely in this movie. Yeah, he's uh, the one dude who survived uh, being on the log, uh, aside from Jeff Bridges. The only reason I have him on here... Oh, shit. ...is because in 1991... He played Jack Lee Johnson in Murder, Murder She Wrote. Wrote. Uh, I will warn you, Jessica Fletcher is about to be all up in our ass, as the kids say. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aside from that, he was in Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. I um, love that movie. I don't give I've a fuck. I've never seen that movie. Oh, my God. A <laughs> uh, Mickey Rourke classic. And Don Johnson. That's right. He was yeah. in the movie Dark Man, a uh, Sam Raimi uh, action uh, movie. Um, Dark Man's so good. Yeah, it is. A, I haven't seen that in a, a tragically long time. Liam Neeson. Yeah, he plays Dark Man. Uh, first and ten, the HBO football comedy series. He's also in Friday the Thirteenth, the series. Not good. Not at all. Not at all. Um, Amazing Stories in nineteen eighty five. That was an awesome show. Uh, it was like an anthology, like a sci-fi anthology show by like big name. I think Steven Spielberg did one. Robert Zemeckis did one. Yeah, it was like a yeah. Um, there's Joe Dante was, did one. Were they supposed to be like true, true stories kind no, of? No, no, they were like crazy. Like, oh, stuff. this is another one of those like Twilight Zone kind of knockoff shows. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was like less like intense, like less like horror. -y, <clears> I was thinking of like a, more of like an unsolved mysteries kind of thing. Yeah, no, no. Uh, he was in the Jeffersons. He was on Benson, which uh, Rene Bergenois was also on for like a mm -hmm. hundred and something episodes. Um, heart to heart. Say, you know what? We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. We're here for the murder she wrote. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Jack O'Halloran. Honestly, he is best known as Nan from Superman 2. Uh, he was the one, like, uh, thuggish uh, boat crew guy in this. The guy who's like, oh, I'll have to examine her. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that guy. Uh, he played Nan in Superman 2. He was in Superman 1 briefly. Um, he was also uh, in Dragnet, the movie, which I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the 80s comedy with Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks. <clears throat> um, let's see. So he's still in stuff, doing some voice work, it looks like. Jesus. Um, some of the DC animated stuff. Is this the Flintstones movie? From 94? Yeah, it has to be. I think so. I don't remember. Yeah, he was. He played a Yeti in that movie, but I don't remember that. Um, he was also 15 at the time. I remember watching that movie, and the, the only thing that really sticks with me is when he shows up late. Fred Flintstone shows up late to his meeting, and he goes, Oh, sorry, I'm late. Got a flat. And he throws his foot up on the fucking table, and he's got this gigantic gash in the bottom <laughs> of his foot. I remember seeing that at the Cine 10. Like, my uncle took us to see it when I was a kid. You are so old. Yeah. <laughs> very, very old. Old people solving murders. Diagnosis murder. That one is definitely a murder. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another one. Perry Mason, yeah. Actually, Perry Mason started off as not an old man solving mystery show. <laughs> just, yeah, evolved into that. 
uh, the role he was in before Dragnet. He played Lou Ross in a 1985 episode of Murder, Murder She Wrote. Wrote. Uh, aside from that, Knight Rider, Hunter, uh, uh, Superman 2, which I mentioned. Uh, this is his like, third role uh, of all time. Yeah. He was on an episode of uh, How Did This Get Made a couple of years ago. And he is goddamn fascinating. Yeah? Yeah. He um, he talks a lot about, like, the Salkins, the producers of the Superman movie. Yeah. How they were, like, shady, like, shifty fucks. Yeah. Um, his father was, was apparently... If they were like, movie producers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His father was, like, a known fucking gangster. I forget who he said his father was. Um, but, yeah, fucking tells some crazy stories. Uh... I forget, like, talks about, like, people he's threatened. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, Christopher Reeve is, like, a person, like, he grabbed by the neck once. And, like, <laughs> fucking, yeah. Like, threatened. Oh, so he weakened him, and then the horse finished the job? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, is that but, bad? Yeah. Is that, is that bad? Too soon. Too, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been 30 years. <laughs> oh, side note, while well, this is here, did you watch this Mike Tyson show on Hulu? I did not. It's not good. I can't imagine it would be. <laughs> um... Mike Tyson is fascinating, but I don't need a churched up version of his story. It's, it is very weird because it's a flashback of a flashback. It is told, like framed as him doing his stage show, telling stories about him as a kid. So like, it's like him doing the show in 2017 and then flashing back to when he was a kid. And the guy playing him is doing... An impression of him. He's not like... If he were acting as the character, like it, it would be a little less cartoonish. Yeah. He's doing a good job of it. He plays like the older Mike Tyson very well. But it's just like... It's just too... Too like over the top. Yeah. It's it's fucking not good, which is disappointing. Because I love much Mike Tyson. It would if they just had Mike Tyson do all the acting and not acknowledge it. Well, I mean, if you're gonna ha if you're gonna frame the story as him telling the story of him as a kid, just fucking have Mike Tyson do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, that's my uh, my gripe about that. Dennis Fimple, uh, he is in this movie. He is Sunfish. I think he's one of the boat guys. Well, probably. I mean, with a name like Sunfish, yeah, he's definitely not one of the well. Islanders. That's for sure. If you catch my drift. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's sort of a black and white issue. Yeah, it's very, very black and white. Uh, he is in the movie House of a Thousand Corpses. He is the grandfather in that movie, the yep. Firefly grandfather. Um, he had big old sideburns in that movie. Yes, yes, he did. He was in a wheelchair, too, I believe. Yeah. Uh, he plays a homeless man in Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. What a descriptive title. <laughs> he is in the... Uh, Kelsey Grammer comedy Down Periscope in 1996. Which is great. <laughs> He's in the Weird Science TV series. <laughs> Another USA classic. Uh, he's in the movie Maverick in 1994. Oh, I, I do like that movie. Uh, a show that gets talked about on here quite a bit. The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Yep, that's a good one. Uh, Quantum Leap. Parker Mo Lewis Can't Mo Lose. The ripoff Ferris Bueller. More Dragnet. Dragnet, the 90s revival. 227. I remember watching the shit out of that when I was a kid. Uh, That's when Saturday Night TV used to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, 80s, you're, you remember when, like, you could sit down and watch just TV? <laughs> yeah. There was, like, entertaining programs they showed on there. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't just all people remodeling houses or chasing ghosts. Um, <laughs> he was in an episode of The Dukes of Hazard in 1983. Knight Rider pops up again. The Greatest American Hero. I remember liking that show when I was a kid. <clears throat> Which, like... they was a guy from House, right? Yeah, William Cat. Yeah. They keep, like, threatening to reboot that, like, every few years. And it just never comes to... The free. Greatest American Hero or House? Uh, both, I believe. Ugh. <laughs> By the way, we're talking about the horror movie House, not the not House the MD show. Yeah, yeah. TV show. The awesome, awesome uh, horror movie House. Which I got to interview the writer of uh, back in the day. He was a fucking yeah. awesome interviewer. Um, fuck it. I gotta get his name. Oh, wait, House isn't on here. Never mind. It doesn't matter. Yeah, never mind. Uh, let's see. That might be the. Oh, he's in Battlestar Galactica, the original, the TV series, uh, the Rockford Files. Uh, we're past the murder she wrote here, so we're gonna. Yes. Go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ed Lauter. He played Carmichael, I believe. He's the guy. Holy uh, shit. I didn't even. Carmichael, that was his name. I didn't even recognize him in this. Yeah, he's one of those. He's like character actors who's just like, you know his face. He's been in a shitload of movies. Yeah. Um, He died a couple of years ago. Uh, Let's see. Some of the stuff he is known for. He was in the Shameless TV series. He was on The Office. Uh, Let's see. Psych. Psych, the TV series. Um, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, Cold Case, uh, the number twenty three. Is that that fucking Jim Carrey movie where like he's like a serial killer or something? Maybe you know what? I don't give enough of a shit to actually investigate. Yeah, uh, he was in the movie Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, which I amazing movie. I love that movie so much. Amazing. I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the Invisible Fires get my friend. <laughs> I can't believe that movie is sixteen years old. Oh that Jesus, hurts. that hurts. <laughs> uh, he's in the Longest Yard remake. He was on NYPD Blue, Jag, Starship Troopers, two. I think they've made they made like a four whole series of, of those. Four yeah. of those, at now? least I want to say four. Um, he was in Sea Biscuit. I've never seen that movie, but it apparently was critically acclaimed. Uh, original flavor CSI. Uh, it looks like he did a six episode stint on ER. Uh, he was the coach in Not Another Teen Movie. Uh, Law and Order, Original Flavor. Uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Silas Beto. Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. I watched a lot of that show. <laughs> Syndicated uh, 90s revival of the original Kung Fu. Yeah. Uh, leaving Las Vegas, uh, Nicholas Cage, I think, won an Oscar for that movie. Was, was that right? That was the one where he was trying to drug himself to death in yes, Vegas. Yes, and he right? does. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> Very successful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, let's see. He's in the movie Wagons East. Uh, I think it was John Candy's last movie, uh, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was. Um, he was in the Highlander TV series. With, uh, oh, who, who was in that? Richard movie? Lewis. Yes. Yeah. The guy that was in the juice. No, not part. Richard Lewis. No. Um, Chandler from Friends. No, no, no. Uh, both of them, perhaps? No, that was Chris Farley's last movie. What am I thinking of? I think Richard Lewis is in this movie. Yeah, Richard Lewis. Yeah, Richard Lewis. The guy from the juice box commercials. What was the movie with fucking Chris Farley and the dude from Friends? It's basically the same movie where they were like... It was, yeah. Um... They were like Lewis and Clark type of fucking... Yeah. I want to say it was Chris Farley's last movie, unfortunately. And it was... Yeah. What the fuck was that movie? I don't remember that. Almost Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This was much better. Yeah. Uh, he was in The X-Files. Uh, True Romance, which is a fucking awesome movie. I think it was... Uh, Quentin Tarantino wrote it, but did not direct it. Yeah. I want to say Ridley... No, Tony Scott directed. Uh, survey says... Tony Scott. Tony Scott. I have my moments every now and again. <laughs> um, Renegade, the TV series. Yep. Another syndicated 90s classic. With Lorenzo Lamas, which is so steamy. <laughs> it's very steamy. Uh, he did an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation... Uh, he was in the Rocketeer, the Monsters uh, syndicated TV series from the nineties. Uh, uh, Father Dowling Mysteries. We have old people solving all the fucking murders. Yeah, we do. Episode. Yeah, yeah. And Kojak. And Kojak, the nineties revival. Um, Gleaming the Cube, uh, the oh. yeah, <laughs> River Phoenix skateboarding movie, which was uh, like re-released in the nineties as A Brother's Justice. It was, like, it was like a Fox TV movie. Oh. I'm like, well, this is fucking Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally the same movie with a different title. Was it really? Uh, maybe there's a mention of it. Probably not. No. Of course not. I want to say Tony Hawk did some of the skateboarding oh, scenes Christian in that. Slater, not River Phoenix. Yeah. The same fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Blonde <laughs> cokehead. Ha <laughs> 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 one of them survived yeah that's true his career didn't but anyway. <laughs> on fire tonight folks uh, he was in <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds 2 uh, Nerds in Paradise 
But in 1987, he was on Murder, Murder She Wrote. Wrote. We got a fucking hat and trick. Oh, we are not fucking done with Murder Are you she shitting Wrote. me? Like I said, Jessica Fletcher is all over this episode tonight. Is this like thing level? We are setting a new record tonight. Get out of here. I will, I will lay that down right now. Uh, Death Wish 3. Gross. Uh, he was in the movie Real Genius, which is a fucking great, great comedy from the 80s. Yes, it is. Uh, Val Mom, Kilmer. I just want to go home. <laughs> Uh, any other stuff? A team, A team, Magnum PI, a lot of like big eighties like TV shows. Yeah, I uh, used the movie Cujo, uh, nineteen eighty three, Simon and Simon, uh, BJ and the Bear. Jesus, hey, the boy who drank too much. <laughs> I know him. It's the story of my late twenties. <laughs> of course, I know. Yeah, I am <laughs> him. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's, right. Of course I know him. He's me. <laughs> you, <Obi-Wan Kenobi. laughs> you gotta go like this. He's me. <laughs> uh, he's in the original Longest Yard. Uh, Captain Knauer. That's probably where I most know him from. Yeah. But I, I mean, the original is a fucking classic, but I like the remake as well. But the original is way, way fucking better. It, the, the original is more of a, like, story. Yeah, the second one's more of just a comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, they're, they're both good on their own merits uh, yeah. you know, for different reasons. Uh, that might be it as far as the notable stuff. Oh, his first role was in Dark Shadows, uh, the TV uh, series. That gave us Barnabas Collins and spun off a shitty, shitty Tim Burton movie. That's so bad. Yeah. That's so it's bad. Probably a strong contender for his worst movie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gary Wahlberg. He played the army general in this movie. In 1989, he God played damn, Sam right off the jump. Kendall in Murder, Murder She, she wrote. wrote. Uh, Quincy M.E. pops up again. Uh, we really don't give a shit about it. I'm, I'm done. I'm, yeah. d- I'm spent. Star Rock for Files. Rock for Files shows up again. Manix. It's like the third time Manix is showing up. Oh, tonight. shit. The Odd Couple. He was in the original Odd Couple for 13 episodes. Uh, he played Speed. Uh, Gunsmoke. Uh, the Waltons. So this dude's been all over TV. Kojak, the original one. Police Story. Love American Style. Ironside. Uh, the original Lassie. Did eight episodes on that. Uh, this dude is no stranger to TV or Nick at Night. The Mod Squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bonanza, Green Acres. Jesus Christ. Uh, All the classics. Peyton Place, The Fugitive, the original Star Trek. Uh, Balance of Terror is the episode he was in. The Virginian. So we have had... Uh, aside from the the latest We've had two, many iterations of Star Trek. We've had all of them except for the latest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's original, next gen, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise have all been on here. Uh, let's see. Moving on. We're really here for one thing and one thing. Are you alone. shitting me? I am not shitting you. 1993, our next person is Kenny Long. He played the dude in the... Uh, he was like the, the priest dude in the gorilla monkey mask. He was played video director in a 1993 episode of... Murder, Murder She Wrote. Wrote. Uh, Jesus. Uh, he was also on Hunter, WKRP in Cincinnati. Uh, King Kong was his first a role. hero ain't nothing but a sandwich. Oh, I could go for a fucking hero sandwich right now. I'm a little hungry. Yeah. Moving on, our last person, uh, Wayne Hefley, played the Air Force General in this movie. This motherfucker was on Murder, She Wrote in 1988, uh, twice in the same season, played a security guard and guard. Uh, so we had... Might have been the same, might have been the same character. Maybe. But there's, in the Murder, She Wrote universe, we're gonna, we're gonna consider that the same character. Yes. We had six... A total of six Murder, She Wrote credits. The uh, thing was five, wasn't it? Yeah. So we have a new record for Murder, She Wrote. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, let's see. He was on Days of Our Lives, uh, Simon and Simon, Trapper John, which I still will swear is an old people's <laughs> the murder show. Uh, he was in Airwolf and then Blue Thunder, which is the... T- Airwolf is the TV series, <laughs> basically, of Blue Thunder. It's the yeah. same fucking thing. Uh, Heart to Heart shows up again. Uh, Hill Street Blues. Manimal has shown up more than once. Yeah, that's that multiple times. BJ and the Bear again. 
uh barnaby jones so by the way bj and the bear misleading title that's a monkey not a bear yeah <laughs> he's an orangutan <laughs> <laughs> uh he was an orca the uh the jaws ripoff jaws, actually maybe ripoff it does pretty pretty damn feet. good movie yeah yeah so richard harris in that and uh bo derrick i think i think so yeah uh, richard harris charlotte rampling that's who yeah. he is yeah, no, no it's Bo Derek. Yeah, decent ass movie. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that in so long. I just remember the fucking whale biting off Bo Derek's leg. <laughs> uh, she deserved it. Yeah. Uh, that will do it for the better known as segment of the show. Holy shit! Moving on to the crapshoot. Moving on to the crapshoot. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back in the studio. Yeah, I was going to say, I am not drunk enough for this. Uh, but I am dehydrated, so I have to Oof. drink this non-alcoholic beverage before I take another alcoholic beverage. Beer's got water in it. <laughs> it was water at one point. That's, that's the main ingredient. Ah, <sighs> it's, just, it's just so nice. Like, I don't know if anybody out there has ever tried to do something creative where there's a gap in the latency so it sucks it's it's bad yeah um so like imagine a skype call but where you're trying to be entertaining yeah 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 it's 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 it was fucking weird not uh, like having that delay like on skype and shit so yeah damn glad to be back in the studio yeah it's really good really good plus um, it's it's just way more vibey and mood yeah um, oh you got that light to be purple again. I did. I somehow got it connected to the app the other day. I'm like, well, let me get it back to back to purple. That yeah. one is just a wall. It's on yeah. its own. <laughs> it's always just going to be amber. Yeah, it's just yeah, orangish uh, for now. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is in keeping with the theme. Uh, here we have oh this fucking oh we. Didn't I love that he though. wore. Uh, he's wearing the crown. I don't. I don't know yeah. why. I love it. At some point, like somebody had to order a giant crown. <laughs> Like commission. Somebody said like to their like you know subordinate, like, hey, I need you to order a crown, like a big, big crown. With holographic yeah. stickers on well, it. Well, like how big do you need it? I don't know, big enough for like a <laughs> 40 foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. And he leaves it on his head. Like once he like once he gets his hands kind of free, yeah. it's still up there. It's an escape-proof cage, like, as he's ripping it apart. Yeah. It's like, did you not see the wall he broke down? <laughs> um, but no. Here's, Fuck you, Charles Grove. Here's the, this is the scene where we can famously see the shitty fucking robot. Um, they were promised that this fucking robot was going to, like, walk and, and, like, move and be fully animatronic and do all this shit. And, like, I think it worked once. Yeah. Uh, and it's in this movie. They spent, like... Well, we said like you know probably equivalent of like five million today dollars. It was one point seven million dollars for the yeah, and I think they it, the robot there that's the robot right there. Yeah, um, it's in this movie for less than thirty seconds. Probably. Robot, robot, robots. That's Rick Baker. I mean, all the stuff with Rick Baker like in the suit, decent. Yeah, it, it looks really really good. We'll say Jessica Lang is pretty smoking in this movie. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. <laughs> Total smoke show. Yeah. Yeah, look, monkey just free, walking around. People just, yeah. Yeah, just stand there. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. You deserve to die. That, especially that lady. She had a um, very, we get some bad, bad very shots of the, face. of the robot coming <clears throat> up right here, I think. Yep, there's one. Yeah, yeah. It's real, real bad. <laughs> um... I don't know if it's still there because I probably haven't been to the Great Escape in twenty years. Um, do you remember like the jungle like walk they had there with the rope bridges and like yeah, where you first walk in they have the animatronic gorilla over the entrance like that's yeah. what I'm picturing. That's like, not there anymore. Oh, that's got to be long gone. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so gone. Those bridges scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. Yeah, I, those are barely there anymore. Yeah, I did not like those rope bridges. Really? Yeah, <laughs> scared me so bad. <laughs> I thought I was going right off those things. Oh no. Well, they're safer now than they probably were in the the early 90s. So, 
So yep. Charles Grodin there you gets go. stomped out like a cigarette. Just gets murked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad they don't show the aftermath of that. Yeah, yeah. But they do kind of show him slide his foot into him. <laughs> Just kind of smear him. <sighs> what a mediocre movie. Yeah. Just really. But still somehow like enjoyable. I feel like there's a bigger return, like, as far as entertainment investment on this than, like, you probably should get for the level of movie that it is. I, yeah, you're right. It, and this is one of those ones where you feel a lot of sympathy for the monster. Yeah. Which you don't, you don't get all the time. Like, you get some in, like, the original King Kong. You kind of felt bad for him. But they didn't really try to present it that way. This... Total sympathetic character. Yeah, yeah. Like, he didn't ask for any of that. Yeah, he's basically there because they didn't find oil on the island. Yeah. Yep. So, the big takeaways for this movie are... Um, don't mess with giant monkeys and big oil, bad. <laughs> monkeys bad, big oil, bad. <laughs> no, monkeys good, big oil, bad. <laughs> um... Yeah, that fucking suit looks good, man. That look that's an awesome fucking looking giant gorilla. Yeah. Again, no, this is they, like right out of the They King could Kong not movie. have done better in nineteen seventy four. Yeah. Or six. Six. Nineteen seventy six. And again, I want to say they made this in like less than a year. Yeah, probably. Um The subway car kind of looked like shit though. <laughs> <laughs> that model. I'm going to get another beer. Yeah, I could use one of those. Yeah. I don't think we have any club left, do we? Uh, we do, as a matter of fact. I will take a club. They're in cans. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Renewing my membership. Hand that down. Ah, thank you. This is an abbreviated version Which of the Chris Show while Nick's off getting a beer. Average? Uh, I don't really have much to report this week. Uh, the Chris Show is uh, very, very time constrained this week. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what to do on the Chris Show this week. Right now, I'm going to drink a Utica Club out of the can. This is a, a classic go-to beer, kind of a headache beer. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. It's like the ASMR commercial Whenever Nick goes away, I, <laughs> the last couple of episodes, I do the Chris Show, which yeah, <laughs> is like the show within the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's doing micro shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was episode three of the Chris show. Thanks. Episode three. Yeah. <laughs> I have Ooh. the very last Elliot Ness. Oh, those were damn good beers. They've been they've been hanging out a while though. Yeah. I think it's because it's been in the back of the fridge. It's always just been like new beer comes in. One of those goes in front. Fucking nasty. I think like Dunkin' Donuts beers might still be in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember yeah, we're trying to pawn that off on somebody that doesn't know any better. Uh, there's definitely some. That's going to be a good Griggs beer. Yeah, yeah. Which who should be here at some point? If his wife lets him, maybe. Uh, we broke him last time, but that's a after recording story. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to mention. What to mention? I don't know. <laughs> Oof. Uh, good to be in the studio. Yeah, we don't really have anything going on right now. Yeah, our next uh, our next gig uh, ain't till Saratoga in November. Yeah, right around Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, looking forward to seeing seeing some folks out there. That'll be fun. Maybe we'll get. Uh... No, I I almost guarantee you we're gonna be drunk when you see us. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Try to get another bottle of whiskey. But it's ten in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Again, it is 10 in the morning. Again, last time we were there, we, <laughs> we had a bottle of whiskey in us. Kicked by noon. <laughs> by noon. <laughs> uh, With minimal help. I, I was about 400 milligrams deep. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. You ate a big old piece of that nerd's room. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> John's jaw is on the floor right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I see God in about two hundred. So I was about four hundred deep in uh, Mid Hudson last weekend. Also, yeah. 
We're degenerates. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Okay? We have a problem. <laughs> and the problem is we're not making enough money at these cons. So yeah. come out and buy some, some dollar comics. Yeah. Uh, we've got some Funkos left. <laughs> Uh, we've got some cool skull bags now. That's an incentive. Yeah. 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 Come spend money. Uh, and more importantly than that, we'll come hang out and grab some free swag. Yes. We are good for free shit. We always have free shit. For yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Send us an email telling us what kind of free swag you would like. Because, I mean, our sticker ideas are good. But they're, we can only do so much. So yeah. what else What else do you think is cool? If um, there, I will say there are some designs that are in our slideshow that we have not made stickers yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you see something there, let us know. Shout it out. We'll try to get it made as a sticker. Uh, if you have ideas for stickers, hey, throw them at us. I'll, I'll, I, am, I am by no means trained as a graphic designer, but I'll do what I can do. I'll yeah. do what I can do. We do our best. Um, so I think we're just going to throw some socials. And get the hell out of here, and you can carry on with the rest of your day. Sounds like a plan. It does sound like a plan. So, you can find our website at www.bigdumbmonsterspodcast.com or www.bigdumbmonsters.com, which I haven't mentioned in a while. We have two websites because I'm a fuck-up. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to send us those emails, uh, beer ideas, movie ideas, merch ideas, Eh, really anything. Just no dick pics, please. Um, you can do that at BigDumbMonsters uh, at gmail.com. Uh, you want to shoot us a twit or tweet, whatever the fuck they call them. Shoot us a twat. <laughs> nope. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> at dumb underscore monsters. Uh, if you're on Facebook, we're on Facebook. So you can connect with us at Big Dumb Monsters Pod. And if you are on Slasher, the all horror social media app, we are Big Dumb Monsters Podcast. Uh, we are also up on Instagram at big underscore dumb underscore monsters. Uh, you can also check out the podcast on the Big Dumb Monsters channel on YouTube. Yep. We have crossed 20 subscribers. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing it. Keep, Come on, guys. Keep, keep clicking that subscribe button, folks. Yeah. Uh, we are getting there. Uh, so we appreciate it. If you are a subscriber or if you're about to be a subscriber, uh, we appreciate you as well. Yeah. Super good. Uh, so we will leave you with our words of wisdom that we always do. Don't let ghoulies eat your ass. And do not sleep in a deathbed. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs>